Every enterprise wants to optimize profitability and minimize costs. SAP Profitability and Performance Management can help you do this by providing deep insights on granular revenue and cost information at the customer, product, or channel level. SAP Profitability and Performance Management comes with predefined sample content for cross-industry profitability and cost management, which is modeled on SAP best practices. This includes an end-to-end -end example of an activity-based costing model that's applicable to both actual and planning data. It focuses on profitability across product and service, channel, and customer dimensions, and it incorporates a predefined process template with manual data input, calculation, and result review activities to run the model in production as well as for what-if simulation purposes. This is the application start screen, which offers role-based access to all relevant applications. For the design of a calculation model, we use the My Environment application. Choose My Environment style. All environments visible in the tree are accessible only when the user has the appropriate authorizations. Choose Cross Industry, Profitability and Cost Management version 2, and continue. This is the modeling environment where power users design and set up their calculation models. At the top, there is a global toolbar which links to various general functionalities. On the left, there's the function hierarchy where we can find all modeled business functions. SAP best practices organize the business functions into four areas. The first of these, the integrate data sources area, is where all connections to the surrounding system landscape are located. The data input area contains all foreseen manual interactions with the execution users. For instance, to apply management overrides or update drivers. The processing area contains the core heart of the calculation model, where all data is processed during execution. The reporting area offers predefined reports, through which users may review the results and gain transparency using value flow diagrams. On the right, the details of the selected business functions are shown. Let's start with a modeling overview. This model is mainly about allocations surrounded by a couple of data sources and reports. Now that we have a first overview, let's check out some further details. By choosing environment, we can see which fields are used in the model. In our case, almost all fields are external and reused with all their existing master data and hierarchy information, which is a good starting point to avoid any data redundancy and maximize reuse in an integrated system landscape. By expanding the integrate data sources area, we can see the business functions underneath. For instance, the plan and forecast data uses a model BW function, which can connect to external and internal business warehouse info providers like info cubes or data store objects. That is where we get our plan and forecast data from. Also, other data sources are connected here, like general ledger data and various driver and survey data. Expanding the data input, we can see the business functions beneath that part. For instance, we have a query function which allows end users to check and update the plan and forecast data. The input function links it to the underlying plan and forecast data store. A query function can be switched to editable, so the end users will be able to change the data if needed and see the impact of those changes after model execution. Once we hit the Activate button, we can test this out directly. The functionality looks good, so we can continue. Another example is the query function to fill activity survey data, which is part of our manual activities and allows end users to run surveys for a bigger audience and collect the results centrally to use them as additional activity drivers. This is linked to the underlying activity survey data store. Because we define for version that it should be represented as a variable selection option, this will result in a header selection that needs to be filled in by the user first before filling any data. The same is true for the survey field. So in other words, multiple end users will be able to use it for data input in parallel. Let's test this quickly. 
The functionality is fine for our purpose, so we can continue. The processing part contains the business functions responsible for the processing, calculation, and allocation of data. These functions produce all enterprise profitability results as a detailed multi-dimensional profit and loss statement. Union GL plan and forecast data is a joint function and combines actual plan and forecast data from different data sources into one stream, which the same calculation rules are then applied to. The union activity and survey activity drivers is another joint function and combines the activity drivers coming from a source system with the manual activity survey data. Calculate additional activity drivers. This calculation function is used to calculate an activity driver, which is not delivered from a source system nor entered manually, but can be calculated based on some existing driver data. Here's the allocation template. This is not used directly during the calculation, but rather, it just serves as a template to define certain allocation settings centrally. Other allocation functions refer to this template, so the settings in the template overrule the settings in the individual function. For example, functions such as allocation type, result handling, and so on. Assign resources is the first allocation function in our step-down approach, and it allocates GL plan and forecast data to resources. We also use an allocation to cover scenarios beyond pure assignments of line items to resources, like using less than 100% of the amount, or splitting the amount across more than one resource. Allocate resources to activities is a simple allocation using the result of assigned resources as allocation sender, resource drivers as allocation receiver data, and as one rule segment for allocation. Allocate activities to products and services uses the result of the activity allocation as a sender, all activity drivers as a receiver, and uses multiple rule segments to allocate local products and services in a different way compared to non-US services, which are allocated first on the region level and then further down on the services level. Also here at any point in time, we can test the configuration by choosing Activate and Run. We can decide to look at the results from an end-user perspective by choosing Analyze or from a data scientist perspective by choosing Show. This time, we decide for Show. At the top of this results screen, you can select from all available filters. In the middle of the screen, the data is shown like it's technically processed. Metadata is also available, for example, which formulas are applied for each record and which business function rule was applied. At the bottom, there is a detailed application log about all executed business functions. Allocate products and services to customers can also use multiple rule segments to allocate partially to customer level directly and partially via channels down to customer level. This completes the processing and provides the detailed profitability results. When we expand the reporting area, we see the various model reports available for end users to review the results on activity and product levels as well as one value flow report, which offers users end-to-end -end traceability from resources through all applied drivers to the final result. Such report configuration can contain a lot of detail. For instance, here in the review results query function, a GL account hierarchy is already pre-selected. And in the value flow configuration, Beside all relevant value flow characteristics, amount and driver formulas can be predefined. These are just some of the features of the modeling environment of SAP profitability and performance management. Thank you for watching.